alignment with nature and and and, and, and and what scientist or group is going to uh, be able to develop the gauge by which you set up that system well you can look at it from here's a very oversimplified example but it get the point across very easily if you have a plot of land and you want to do something with that land, say grow something on it, build something on it, you're going to analyze the topsoil of it. The parameters of that land become self-evident as to what you can do on it. Now, when you apply this to the planet, you begin to see that the resources that the society needs, which can be assessed through surveying what is necessary for the society, has a natural development and will, can, can occur naturally without opinion whatsoever because you're basing it on tangible resource management of the planet. That's why in the film, I keep going back to the same point. It's stay there, project. stay there. We're going to skip this break right now. Here we go. Okay, continue, Peter. It's the intelligent re management of the Earth's resources that's needed. Now, people don't understand what that means. They don't know what that means because they've been so conditioned into this completely artificial structure of money and labor for money, competition for labor, and money for resources. This is a complete... This is a completely fictional disposition. It's a false system because there's nothing but resources. And the ideology that will construct our new world, so to speak, is an ide ideology based on resource management as denoted through the scientific method. So that plot of land has the resources available. The only way you can have unification, intellectual unification, excuse me, let me back up. The only way you can have an abundance and an optimization of our world is if you understand what the planet has and you gauge all of its resources. This is why an intellectual unification that Jacques Fresco talks about, world unification, it's not world government at all. It's an entirely different ideological disposition based on what's available on the planet, what the society needs, and this is an extremely long-winded conversation. I wish we had more time. Yeah, but who's going to decide what humanity needs? The question isn't who's going to decide. It's how will the decisions be made. It's an ideological-based assumption based on nature. There's an empirical order yeah. that's been, in, 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 been working in nature forever. For example, anything that you have in your studio right now, all the technology is derived from one processes, and that's called the scientific method. Our society needs to be completely in accord with this. The parameters are self-evident once you get this train of thought going. But there aren't yeah. going to be people that, quote, want to be in accord, and there's a huge debates within the scientific method. And so uh, how are you going to bring something completely into accord or eradicate uh, that? Well, this is why human behavior has to be understood, which is another very important point that we need well, to Well, I mean, and I disagree with you that humans are fundamentally, you know, don't have competition in them. Okay, well, I mean, that is, that is all over the animal kingdom. That is the name uh, of the game. Sure. But why? Why does the animal kingdom have this? Because of resources. Exactly. But also because of the design in our development within that system of competition, it is to deny how we were developed and what we have been developed to do. I would have to respectfully disagree with that because there's no basis for that. Everything that we have that we think is derived naturally as far as human instinct, every form of human instinct that you see popularized by the modern-day alchemists, the geneticists that say, you know, they can find the genetic gene for smoking or the genetic gene to be a Republican. This is completely ignoring basically everything that the environment has been teaching us. For example, if I took, if you were taken as a little baby, infant, brought over to the Middle East, dropped off into a family that was Muslim, you would be on the air right now speaking Arabic, praising Allah, and you'd have a show called Info Jihad. <laughs> it's, completely, it's completely arbitrary to the extent, I mean, I'm not saying that there are kernels of elements in our lives that dictate we want to live. We well, wait a minute. It's not. Live. It's not kernels. Uh, conservatively, more than half of our activities in motion uh, is genetic and, and nature, and then and then and then nurture uh, is the variant that will change for the time and place and culture how your genetic uh, information manifests. Everything that we understand has been taught to us in some capacity, especially our operations. Every word I'm saying has been taught to me. Every concept has been relayed in mm -hmm. some capacity to me. And through my mental operations, which is a form of conditioning, I have arrived at novel conclusions. My originality is simply because of the, the, the environmental influences that are completely and utterly conditioned to me as opposed to everyone else. Everyone is different because they come from different conditioning, in other words. This is extremely powerful, and it's not 50-50. It's probably 90-10. Our conditioning is everything, and when we realize that the monetary system... Hold on, we're going back to the full audience. Here we go. If 
talking to the creator of Zeitgeist 1 and now Zeitgeist 2 addendum, Peter Joseph. Peter, I fundamentally, and we were just discussing this for the Internet audience only when we skipped that break, we're back to the full audience now. I disagree with you fundamentally that humans are trained and conditioned uh, to be competitive. Um, all um, higher species, mammals particularly, are competitive. It is, uh, at its base, a genetic competitiveness to pass on the traits uh, that made the species excel in its environment uh, in our uh, development. And then all the elite does is knows how to manipulate and punch those buttons and condition those and hone those and bring up certain instincts that have manifested through societal developments and to and 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 to overexpress others and to suppress uh, uh, others that they don't like. Uh, and I mean that's just I fundamentally disagree with you uh, on that point. Well, I want to make a comment then that it, it's for the audience to decide, of course. And I think what people fail to realize, the geneticists fail to realize, you, you, what your worldview isn't taking into account are the millions, if not billions, of years of evolution based on scarcity. All the animal kingdom has lived within scarcity. You have to have social hierarchy of a pack of lions. You have to have fighting because there's not enough to go around. And, the new and you have to have network. fighting today because there's always going to be corrupt people. But some of the Zeitgeist followers say, I can't even say what evil is because that's my Christian construct. No, it's not. Evil is destroying the planet. Evil is killing life. Evil is hurting the uh, weak and the meek and the small. These are basic rules, you know, that what is anti-life, what is destructive of the tribe, we call evil. Well, what is evil? Define it for me. What causes evil? What causes someone to behave in an evil manner? Well, I'm asking you, do you believe evil exists? Absolutely not, because based on the definition of evil, it's basically a religious connotation. It, can't, it doesn't mean anything. It's an empty distinction. If I was to redefine it, I'd say evil would be aberrant behavior. And if I was to define aberrant behavior, I would say almost conclusively that aberrant behavior is caused by the necessities of the environment. But, but, but is it aberrant to have elites uh, through their breeding, through their culture, who are hyper-aggressive and hyper-dominant and sadistic, I call Satanists kidnapping a child and raping them for a month and cutting their heart out evil, uh, because that is evil according to the human code and, and, and evil according to us having safe, happy tribes who can go on b being scientists and creating, which is the main uh, drive and goal of the species. Sure. Nevertheless, however, it's always a product of conditioning. The people in the secret societies that you talk about that have grown up with their elitism, they are, they are molded and shaped. Henry Kissinger, George Bush, these men brought up an elite system. They behave in elite ways. That's right. They sent Prince Charles to, to boarding schools to be beat up, to be treated bad, to make him a nasty person. Well, there you have it, and this is exactly my point. So in order to fully change society, in order to really understand what's going on, you can't use these outmoded words, at least in my opinion. I don't like evil because it has a generally religious notion. It denotes a look, steadfast look, look, look. element. Here's what I'm saying to you. I've read the social workers 150 years ago. I've read the social engineers and the transhumanists and the posthumanists, and they all say very close to what you're saying about this utopia of the machines getting rid of our competitiveness, but then they bring in a hyper-competitiveness to dominate us. When the social workers kidnap people's kids for no reason for the state to re-educate them, uh, it... it, it, it it makes nightmares. It's, I mean, I mean, I've heard all this and people showing me fancy roads and and models of spaceships and saying we're going to create a utopia and we're not going to have money anymore. And, and then what is money versus this monetary system you talk about with banker fractional reserve manipulation? Well, first of all, first of all, there's no utopia. I want to get this out of the way. That that's a loaded term, just like evil. It 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 has no basis. Secondly, the difference between the systems that I'm advocating, the system that I'm advocating versus the fractional reserve monetary system is multifaceted. First of all, the monetary system, I went, I went into specific detail to talk about how the fractional reserve system enslaves humanity distinctly with, with absolute acuteness because there's not enough money in the money supply to go around. Let's assume that there was. Yeah, but you're money. saying it's a system failing. They designed it to consolidate power. It is succeeding according to their aims. You're saying, and your experts are saying, society is going to fail, so we'll have a new, better system or a shot at it. But to them, the drug war, any of it, it's not failing. It is succeeding, and they want to create a collapse to bring in more social engineering and their utopia. Okay, well, you changed you change the topic a little bit from what I was talking about, so let me address that. Basically, the collapse is not entirely 100% rigged. 
what it is is a is a pyramid scheme that is a, that is tipping that they've been expecting for a long time and of course they're going to capitalize on it the fractional reserve system has to fail and that's what we're talking about the monetary system has to fail because it's based on competition and self-interest and power monopolies, just like in the second part of Zeitgeist Addendum, where I talk about world monopolies. Well, I'm going to stop you right there. I'm going to stop you right there. So you can't even say you're wrong there. They fundamentally design these in endless Ponzi schemes that always sieve out, like a guy panning for gold in a river, uh, the wealth. I mean, they admit it. It's in all their documents. Here we go. We're going to skip this break, too. We're going to skip it right now. I mean, go ahead and counter that. Go ahead and explain to me, explain to me how it's not engineered by them. I'm not saying it's not engineered per se. I, I don't see you. You make these leaps that I can't see how you can honestly stand behind.